Google's countryside America. Uh, and so we've got a tremendous we, selling job. We, representatives of 32 general bad. farm, commodity, and cooperative groups there in the Coalition bad. of Farm Organizations, meeting in St. Louis on April 6, 1970, ask the help of Congress, the administration, and the American people to make a renewed commitment to the preservation of family agriculture, the attainment of parity prices for agricultural products, and the restoration of rural America. The industry of agriculture is the greatest creator of wealth in the nation. Farmers do not receive a fair share of the value of this production. Net agricultural income is about the same as it was over 20 years ago. The economic imbalance thus created is resulting in the depletion of rural communities and urban areas swollen with people and problems. The Coalition of Farm Organizations seeks economic equity for agriculture. We seek a system under which farmers can produce to fit the needs of the market. We seek price protection that will prevent hardship. We reaffirm our support of the Coalition Farm Bill. So reads the first three paragraphs in the resolution of the National Farm Coalition. U.S. Farm Report cameras were on the scene in St. Louis, Missouri, so that we might bring to our audience today's filmed report. This man is John W. Zwack, a Republican member of Congress from the state of Minnesota. Congressman Zwack who was preceded at the rostrum by Graham Purcell, Democratic congressman from Texas, was introduced by Orrin Lee Staley, president of the National Farmers Organization. ...of achieving a reasonable and a good farm bill this session of the Congress. It is important and significant uh, that we work together right down the line. Remember. Remember, in every farm organization, there are a great many people that believe just as you do. Cultivate them. Get them going. Let's, get a, uh, let's build up a, mu a momentum that Washington can't resist and that they will understand. And let's wind up with a fine, improved farm program to give us to buy some of the time we need, uh, Orrin Lee and the rest of you, that we need to build up further our strengths on the home front. It's a real privilege to be here. Thank you, and good luck. In the afternoon session, a panel discussion on the subject of city farm interdependence was moderated by Tony Deschamps, president of the National Farmers Union comments that were made by Congressman Graham Purcell and Congressman Swack, uh, we now move to another phase uh, of our deliberations here today, of our discussions. And I'd like to say that if there's one thing that farmers have learned the hard way, it is that uh, our numbers are shrinking. We've heard it time after time. And we've been told time after time that our votes are shrinking. And this has brought us to the realization, belatedly perhaps, that we really can't pass legislation in Washington by ourselves. We must have the help of others. I'm glad to say to you today that the news in this regard is on the plus side. We are finding that the farm program is not only of concern to farmers, but to all segments of this nation. It makes good sense that the big, biggest business in the nation should be the most important one to this nation. Obviously, those who do business in rural America, farmers, farm implement dealers, bankers, all of them, all of us, have a vital stake in the farm program. But I say to you, that the consumers of this nation, both those in rural areas and those in the urban areas, have the biggest stake of all. And indeed, now it must be said that if the farm program does not serve all of these interests, it has little reason for being. We are on the front end of this change. 
farmers understand it. Business, and that includes agriculture, does not exist for itself alone. It must serve the public interest. But we are only on the front end of this change. Enormous centers of corporate power still have their heads buried under their common stock. Short-term profits and high interest rates blind them to the long-term public interest. I'm glad to say to you that most farm organizations are ahead of the trend. It is now obvious that one word has gained acceptance in Washington. It is coalition. Later, I had the pleasure of visiting with Tony in a room near the conference floor. Tony, I know that you're very anxious to get back to Washington, and I appreciate your taking just a few minutes to appear on U.S. Farm Report. When you get back to Washington, what uh, will be the status of the Farm Coalition bill? It's in the Senate and House now, is it not? It is in the Senate and the House. We're hoping that in the immediate days ahead, uh, the Senate will be marking up its bill, and uh, I'm inclined to believe that uh, we may come out of the Senate Agriculture Committee with a good bill. The House, of course, will be... Um, uh, marking uh, its bill, the subcommittee on grains and uh, livestock will be considering uh, various phases of the uh, farm legislation. So things are going to be popping in Washington in the immediate days ahead. Now, there were some 32 farm organizations represented here in this coalition today. Did you get the feeling of a real unity among uh, these 32? Well, there's been unity for a long time. We've, we've developed a very fine consensus uh, during the uh, last... Uh, uh, six months. The thing we had here today that uh, encouraged me a great deal and impressed me a lot was uh, enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. uh, there was some real enthusiasm for the bill and obvious intention of going home uh, and uh, trying to do something about it. And of course, this is what we need. We need action out at the farm and uh, rural community level. Tony, I think you would agree that for many years politicians have been saying to the farmers, why don't you fellas get together and agree on what you want then tell us in Washington what you want, and we'll try to get something done for you. Now, here is a case of agreement being reached. What do you think the, the reaction of the politicians will be? Well, I hope it'll be favorable. Uh, many times the politicians have uh, urged us to go home and get together because that was an excuse for them to uh, uh, keep from having to face up to the issue of which way they were going to uh, go. Uh, but the Secretary of Agriculture a year ago called... Uh, for a consensus among farm organizations and among farmers, and he went out in the country to try and find this consensus. And we uh, all, I think, all of the organizations applauded him on this. We uh, thought it was very fine. He certainly uh, uh, was a very patient fellow. He went out and visited uh, with farmers and uh, tried to develop a consensus. Well, a number of us uh, took him at his word, and uh, we got busy too. And we developed a consensus in agriculture. And we think it's a true consensus because uh, it's one that represents a majority of the producers of this nation. So it is significant that 32 uh, uh, farm, commodity, and cooperative organizations would get together in St. Louis uh, to uh, try and figure out uh, what we can do now to uh, get uh, the coalition farm bill passed in Washington. In that same setting, John W. Scott, master of the National Grange, was my guest. John, you chairman did you not the uh, resolutions committee for this meeting yes mr hinkle had asked me to serve as chairman it was a well, i think you've done a splendid job i read uh, these resolutions of the national farm coalition and a lot of things really came home to me uh, that i enjoyed reading them and one of the things that uh, that you have called for here is a preservation of family agriculture the independent farm now, I get a lot of uh, comment on the other side of that coin from time to time, particularly, I think, from urban dwellers who say to me, well, what's the matter with corporate farming? Why are you always preaching about trying to preserve the family farm? I'd like for you as master of the National Grange to answer these people. Uh, I think that, that our, our desire, of, the desire of all of us to preserve the family farm is, is very uh, important. I think it's an, it's an approach that must be, must be maintained, an uh, approach to food production. Let's, let's go back and face it. This is a kind of agriculture, the individual initiative of the family, 
and his members of his family that have made this nation the, the best uh, food producing nation in the land. We've produced food for the lowest price to the consumer of anywhere in the world. Corporate agriculture, if, if we ever take this, the trend, which could happen if this legislation doesn't pass, that we reduce our farms to, say, 500,000 in the hands of oil companies who are out there for some purpose other than building a community. The main thing that I think the family farm contributes that the corporate farm cannot contribute. First place, I think they contribute more, better food at a, at a more reasonable price to consumers. I think the corporate farm will go to higher priced food. But more important than that, we build rural communities. And if you go into an area of the nation where corporate agriculture has taken over, and there are some of those, you'll find abandoned towns. You'll find that the only thing out there on that great agricultural area is perhaps a tool shed that's locked up eight or nine months of the year. And if you go into a good family farming community, it's a community of well-kept farmsteads if agriculture is prosperous because the landowner has pride in his own in his possessions and they maintain a, a, a community that not only looks good but a community that provides uh, the need for labor and services of all kinds mm -hmm. corporate agriculture will buy in the big uh, in the wholesale market there will be a great loss to the rural community if we lose family agriculture there be a, an exodus of the rural businessman right alongside the exodus of the farmer. The rural businessman, the banker, the man who sells automobiles and tractors, the man who sells everything in rural America, the man who makes a living selling gasoline, will find that gasoline will be delivered to the corporate farm in tank, tank trucks, and he's not going to be in business in, in town either. John, what happens to agriculture if government is phased out of it? Well, there are those, you know, who say that this is what we need. That's right. But I wonder if those same people would stand up and say that we don't need any government uh, subsidy or supervision in shipbuilding or for airlines, for postal service, for all the things that we have determined are essential. I wonder if, the, if anybody would want government to get out of the labor legislative area, for instance, and turn labor uh, at the mercy of corporations or at the mercy of the market. I think they would say no. And I think it's just going to be as critical to, to agriculture if we would take all, try to operate in on a completely uh, referee-free situation, so to speak, if we expect it to operate free in the face of and along with an economy that's regulated in every other industry. What can the individual farmer, the farmer who perhaps is listening to us today, John, do in support of a farm program? Probably they control the, they control the failure of passage of this legislation. As to what they can do, first of all, they need to become acquainted with the coalition bill themselves. They need to know what their farm program and what the farm laws of this nation are doing for mm -hmm. them. Then they need to, first of all, let their congressman know that they believe in it, and that they, that as, as one of his constituents, they expect him to support it. But more important than that, they need to talk about it after church with a fellow they sat beside in church. They need to talk about it at, at meetings that they attend where their children go to school. They also need to talk it about, about it to their friends who live in the big cities so that we can, through this kind of a line of communication, build the broad-based support that we must have in order to influence and not influence as much as just so that urban congressmen as well as their constituents will realize the importance of a sound food and fiber policy for this nation just as it's necessary that we have sound labor legislation that we have sound legislation in regards to our uh, interstate commerce of all kinds. This is U.S. Farm Report coverage of the National Farm Coalition meeting, April 6, 1970, attended by these 32 general farm, commodity, and cooperative groups in the coalition of farm organizations. The importance to agriculture of this historic farm coalition meeting, to some degree, is yet to be determined. 
For what transpired in St. Louis in early April, only time will judge. But experts agree that without the meeting of this group of farm leaders, farm programs may well have been phased out completely in five years, throwing American agriculture on the world market at starvation prices. Needless to say, such a tragedy would destroy not only the family farm, but the rural businessman of America as well. Orrin Lee Staley, president of the National Farmers Organization, had some interesting comments to make. Orrin Lee, as president of the National Farmers Organization, do you take some pride in NFO's affiliation with the coalition group? Well, Bill, I think that all members, uh, all farm organizations, uh, all commodity groups are proud to be a part of a joint effort to do something about improving and maintaining at least and uh, improving farm income. Uh, we had one thing in common, and that was that we were all for higher income for farmers. Uh, we had to make some adjustments, give or take, as to the methods and this does not affect the policies of the various organizations, but we have a common objective here and a common cause. And I, we in the NFO, of course, take pride in being uh, in a position to work with these other groups who are also striving to maintain and improve farm income. Well, now, the coalition represents some 32 organizations, right. or is participated in by 32 organizations, representing uh, literally thousands and thousands of farmers. Don't you feel that this coalition, in truth, does represent agriculture? Oh, I, and I think uh, most of the other leaders, and I think all of them, really, uh, feel that our position uh, is one position that 90% of the farmers, uh, I believe, uh, support uh, this position. Uh, they look at the alternatives, and then they look at what uh, these farm groups have been able to put together in the way of a common goal that they're trying to achieve. And uh, I believe that all thinking farmers and people that are understand, uh, that understand the alternatives uh, support this. Mm -hmm. And I think the businessmen in the rural communities do too, Bill. I have heard this comment made up and down the halls here today, that uh, these representatives arrived here last night with a feeling of unity they had a meeting today all day long and left with a great feeling of unity. Now, that is really some accomplishment. Usually, that unity can uh, prevail at the beginning, but sometimes not at the end. Well, uh, particularly with farmers and uh, <laughs> farm organizations in the past. Uh, but I think that the important thing was, not only was there a greater feeling of unity, but I think a greater feeling of strength. Mm -hmm. And uh, the determination had increased, uh, as all people usually do, when they have a common goal that they're all striving to achieve. And uh, I think that this is very true in this meeting. What's going to happen to agriculture if there is no agriculture program? Well, Bill, the first thing that would happen is that it would take the floor out from under our, our agricultural structure. Uh, those that uh, say we should have a phase out of farm programs, uh, those that advocate doing away with farm programs, I don't believe realize, uh, and certainly the farmers, if they're uh, supporting that viewpoint, and rural businessmen don't realize what would happen to them. If uh, farmers could not uh, secure loans on their crops at harvest time, they would be forced to sell in a depressed market and a, a situation where they were forced to sell. Uh, then the parity concept and all the other fundamental parts of a program that has at least given them some base to work from would be destroyed and it would mean that the rural business people uh, as well as many, many of the farmers, a very high percentage, could no longer exist as business people in the rural areas. Well, the future of agriculture makes it perhaps imperative that the farmer who might be looking in today and listening to us, Orrin Lee, does something about supporting the passage of the Farm Coalition bill. What can he do? Well, if they realize how serious it really is and what is really at stake, I think they will immediately sit down and write their congressman supporting the Farm Coalition bill. I think they'll write their senator. And unless they do this, they're sitting idly by without voicing their opinion and letting those opposing farm programs say that they represent them when really uh, I don't think they do.
Clell Carpenter, Vice President of Mid-Continent Farmers Association, MFA, host organization for the conference, was my next guest. Clell uh, is Vice President of uh, the Missouri, uh, well, of course, now I'm mixed up a little because I've known this as Missouri Farmers Association for so many years, but now it's Mid-Continent right. Farmers Association. It's still MFA. Still MFA. Gotcha. And, uh, it is your organization that uh, hosted this meeting in St. Louis today of the Farm Coalition Group. Well, Bill, we actually tried to do some of the fiscal arrangements on it. Uh, actually, it was the 32 members of the coalition that were honestly the host. Uh, mm -hmm. We have held, uh, under mid-continent auspices in years past, meetings something similar to this, but I must say never any as large and, and as well attended and we think this has been a fine meeting. Yes, Mr. Hinkle, your president, chaired this meeting That's right. and did an outstanding job. Uh, we hope to uh, include him uh, in our coverage, but he had some uh, previous commitments and won't be able to be with us. But we'll take the vice president, okay? That happens frequently. <laughs> I want you to comment, Clell, if you will, for our viewers, on just exactly what the coalition farm bill is. What does it represent in terms of improvements to the farmer? Well, number one, <clears throat> Bill, I think I can say what it is. We feel, the 32 members of the coalition, that this is honestly a consensus of opinion of honest-to-goodness dirt farmers on, on what is needed in, in the area of farm legislation. Now, it would take uh, several rolls of tape to go into all of the bolts and <laughs> yes, nuts of what yes. it is, but just let me say briefly that we, in effect, are proposing the continuation of the Agricultural Act of 1965 with major income improvement amendments. I wanted to make that real clear that we have a feeling that, and the facts bear it out, that the Agricultural Act of 1965 has been a great factor in stabilizing farm prices. We are the first to admit that they are not high enough. And that is what this coalition is endeavoring to do. Coloradoan Shug Hatcher, president of the National Association of Wheat Growers, made some pertinent observations. Shug, how long has the National Association of Wheat Growers uh, participated with this uh, coalition? Uh, the National Association of Wheat Growers uh, was one of the first groups that is attended the first meeting uh, when it was originally discussed and uh, thought about whether this could uh, be brought into being. And I would recall that this first meeting uh, had to have been at least two years ago. I don't remember the definite date now, but uh, it had been at least that long ago that it was more of a discussion at that time rather than the being brought into existence. Well, if it was in the discussion stage two years ago, it must be pretty obvious to everybody who attended here today that uh, now there exists, in truth, an organization with great purpose and unanimity. Don't you feel that way about it? I definitely feel this is true, uh, because uh, in the past years, we were always told, why don't the agriculture people get together? Mm -hmm. Well, we uh, realized that uh, this uh, could happen, and, and in the discussion period, there were some difference, but we very readily uh, decided that the differences could be solved in a hurry, mm -hmm. and we did this. And uh, I, I think this is something that uh, everyone should realize, that this is not a new organization. We are, by some people, be, uh, being considered as a new organization, not representing true agriculture. I don't know the exact percent, but uh, the commodities and farm organizations, I, I would guess that we represent 85% of the people because they belong to different farm organizations, different com commodity groups, and they all feel that this is the way to solve our problem is to work together. Our U.S. Farm Report crew, in looking over the people in attendance here today, concluded that, in truth, some of the most brilliant farm leadership was represented in this meeting today, and that this leadership representing these 32 farm organizations indeed is most representative of agriculture across the nation. I, I feel this is definitely right. 
I've only been president of the Wheat Growers about a year and a half, and I've had the privilege of meeting a lot of people, and I feel the most brilliant agriculture people were represented here today. And they are practically every one grassroots agriculture people, too. Sometime or another in the past, they have been on a farm or still on a farm. And I think that this is something that, that our Congress and our Department of Agriculture should realize by all means that this is grassroots people trying to write a program. They're not reaching up in there and picking it from there. They have been through this. They know what it is. So this is why that I think the coalition is going to stay together. I don't think it can be pulled apart because it's grassroots people and they believe in what they're fighting for and they're not about to give up. Should do you feel that there will be good response uh, in Washington on the part of legislators to what uh, occurred here today? I think it did, depends a lot on the follow-up. Probably the first day they'll, the legislatures will uh, acknowledge our meeting, but it'll sort of drift aside. But if we can do what I'm in hopes that the people at this uh, conference today will do is go home and build a fire under their people at home mm -hmm. and get commu better communication with their congressmen, then it's got to be something. And this is uh, what the congressmen, uh, it's, it's a deciding factor for them. When they uh, have letters, whether they're pressure or not, but letters stating true facts from their constituents at home, then they're going to listen. Mm -hmm. And I feel that uh, these people were overwhelmed today with the enthusiasm when they left. And I think you're going to see them go back into the agriculture district, and they're really going to work. And they're going to work on the city cousins, too, and try to present the true story to their city cousins. Because we've got to have the city cousins help. What we've got to do is tell them our facts and our problems, and I think our city cousins will help us. U.S. Farm Report was there, on the scene of the National Farm Leaders Conference, sponsored by the National Farm Coalition in St. Louis, Missouri. So long, everybody.